Hello everyone, I hope you guys are all having a fabulous Monday. Today I'm coming at you with another Minx Monday Q&A, but before we get started, let's share the bag that I'm currently using, and that is the Louis Vuitton Artsy MM in the monogram print. All right, so let's get going. Uh, with the first question from Jess Munoz, do you think that the Speedy Bandolier 30 Mon Mono is worth the price, or should I just go for a regular Speedy Bandolier 30 and add a luggage tag to personalize it? Uh, I might be the wrong person to ask, <laughs> and they're only reason I say that is because I used to have a classic uh, Speedy 35 in monogram and I decided to get the Speedy 30 Mon Mono. Uh, and it's such a big price difference uh, as it is with the bandolier and the regular classic Speedy and then you, you know, you throw in uh, the, the Mon Mono. Uh, personally, I if it's something, if it's something that you really, really love and you don't think that you'll end up parting with in, you know, in your collection, because I know a lot of people do end up parting with their Mon Mono pieces. Uh, I, I, I personally think it's worth it. Uh, you know, I've had my ups and downs with the company, but at the end of the day, I still love them. And, uh, I use my Mon Mono quite a bit this summer and I still love that bag. And I like the fact that I was able to to pick the color of the the interior and you know they don't have the largest selection of colors but still you can pick it you can it's such a huge representation of your personality, uh, I think, with the Mon Mono, and that's why I love it. And some of the bags I've had uh, leather or uh, luggage tags for, and that was great as well. But with the Speedy Thirty monogram, I wanted it to be Mon Mono because I knew that I would keep it in my collection forever. So, like I said, I might be the wrong person to ask, uh, but I say if you like it, uh, if you love it, then go ahead and go for it. Uh, okay, Carla CC, two questions for your next Q and A. Do you like to stay at home, watch a movie, or go or go out with your hubby and friends? Um, that's the first question. I, I like a little bit of both. I love staying at home uh, with my with my hubby, you know, and curling up on the couch, watching a movie, uh, especially because Edward's here with us. And uh, I don't know, it just I, I like I like the really calm quiet evenings. Uh, I also love to go out with my hubby and go out with my friends. Although I haven't seen much of my friends in quite some time. I feel like such a bad person, but I've been so busy, uh, you know, and sometimes that happens, but I, I like doing either or I like, I'm very outgoing. Uh, I like to meet new people and I like to go out, uh, and, you know, just kind of have a good time. If I'm having a great time, whether I'm at home or outside, it doesn't matter. It's usually the company that I'm with. So, uh, it doesn't matter to me. Uh, okay. And the second part of the question is I am putting aside, I'm, I'm putting money aside for my first Chanel handbag, but I cannot wait anymore. I would rather get an LV, get an LV and get a St. Germain in noir. Okay. So this goes back to, uh, the buyer's remorse video. Not that it would be a buyer's remorse if you chose a Louis Vuitton over Chanel, but when you really, really want something, you put your, you set your eyes on the prize, right? And sometimes it takes uh, quite some time to save up for it. And other times it takes a little bit less, but at the end, no matter what, it is always that it's such, it's such a great feeling when you finally do end up getting it. And I know it's very, very, very easy to get, uh, maybe discouraged and waiting to get that item or, uh, or you get sidetracked with other items, but trust me, the end is totally worth it because, you know, it won't just be like getting any other bag because you, this is the bag that you really, really wanted and you don't want to settle. And usually when you settle, you'll end up, you know, in some cases, uh, you'll end up kind of thinking you, you know, you buy the item that you settled for. And then maybe a week later, you know, those, those famous words come out. I should have waited. I should have, I should have, could have, would have, you know, you don't want to think that. So I would just say, hold out a little bit longer. It, it will be definitely worth it. Uh, especially if they keep going with their increases the way that they do, who knows? Um, maybe they'll end up being $20,000 in a year. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I, I, God, no, I hope not, but <laughs> I'm just, I'm just saying, uh, you know, it'll, it'll definitely be worth it. But as I've said before, I've always told you guys, always follow your gut. If you think you're going to regret something, don't get it. If you think it's the, you know, if it's, if it's the cool thing to get, because it's the end thing that doesn't necessarily mean it always go with your gut and follow your heart. Uh, okay. Carrie Shelton, I like the Pouchette Matisse, but I am afraid of the issues I've been hearing about. Would you buy it again if you had to do it over again? If you had to do it all over. Over again, yeah. <laughs> the, uh, 
three. Oh, there's three questions. Okay. So the Pochette Matisse, and I brought it out so we can have some eye candy besides the artsy. This shirt is, I feel like it's cutting off my circulation. <laughs> All right. Let me just pull it out. So even though my Pochette Matisse has had some issues, I this is the replacement that I got. I still love this bag. I think it is such a comfortable bag because of the accordion style that you have on the inside. You can fit so much in here. And, uh, you know, it's just, I'm not one for crossbody bags, but when it comes to this bag, this, I mean, it makes me so happy that it is in my collection. So definitely I would still, uh, go for it. Now, if I have an issue with it again, <laughs> obviously my, uh, my, my opinion will change, but, uh, I still, I still do love it. And I did want to say one quick thing before I answer the other questions. Whenever you guys get something repaired, I always advise you to continue to use that item once it gets back from repair, because if it does have a problem with what you did get replaced or, you know, uh, if you got revarnished or something like that, you want, you want the, um, it's going to sound kind of funky, but for example, when I got this replaced, right? You guys know that I had this this issue with the cracking. I'd continue to use it. That way if it got if it started to crack again, it's a lot sooner from when I got it repaired or replaced. That way I can take it into LV and I can say, look, it's been a month or it's been two weeks since I got it replaced and it's happening again. Uh you're they're more than likely to now everything's different, you know, it's a case by case scenario, but they'll uh, I have learned in the past that sometimes it's a little bit easier for them to rectify the situation that much quicker with a better solution. If you don't, you know, if you don't, let's say that you get it back and you wait eight months to use it and then all of a sudden it starts to crack. It doesn't, it doesn't have the same effect. If you, if you, hopefully, hopefully you guys understand what I'm trying to say. So if you ever get something replaced, I suggest you use it right away. So that way, if you notice something happening again, you can take it in much quicker. That's what I meant. <laughs> uh, but yes, I would still get the Pochette Matisse. Uh, okay. And thoughts on the new Mabillion crossbody. I'm sure I'm butchering that. And the and that Mabillion crossbody retails for $13.70. And it is somewhat similar to the Pochette Matisse. Uh, and uh, the only difference is that it has... It kind of reminds me of the hobo of the Matisse, but a smaller on a smaller scale. Not like this. Uh, this is more just the the front side of the, the hobo itself. And uh, you know what I don't like about that bag. So it retails for thirteen seventy. It's a newer style that just got released. Uh, and when I first saw the Pouchette Matisse, I didn't like the fact that it came with the canvas uh, crossbody bag or the crossbody strap. I thought it looked really funky. I didn't think it it really uh, suited the bag. And I was actually going to purchase a uh, Vaquetta strap for it. And when I put the Vaquetta strap on here, it just looked, it looked totally different. It didn't really go with the bag. And that's one thing that I don't like about the Mebillion. Uh, another thing is that the strap is very, very thin. The shoulder, the crossbody strap is very thin. Uh, it also does have the fabric interior versus the microfiber that the Pichette Matisse has. Even though this is roughly $300 more than the other one, I still feel that this one is probably a little bit better. Uh, with, like I said, with the exception of the, um, the, the strap that some people might think that that one's better because it's Vaquetta versus the canvas. So the $300 price difference, you might think, well, I mean, you're getting a little bit more leather on the other one, but you're getting the microfiber on this one. And I just think this one's an, an all around better bag. Uh, but personally I have not, uh, seen the other bag to be able to say for sure with certainty that this is the better one out of the two. Uh, but it's just those things that I noticed the fact that it has the regular fabric, uh, the textile interior, and it has the, the skinnier, uh, Vaquetta crossbody strap. And the last question, what, what's your take on the Louis Vuitton Portobello bag? Uh, issues there as well, but I'm also considering, uh, you know, I love the Portobello and, uh, I have often thought about adding it to my collection. It's just a great, I mean, it's a great Demi Ben Louis Vuitton hobo. It doesn't have a ton of bells and whistles. And I think that's what I like about it. It's very simple. Uh, some people say it, it tends to be a little too high up and ends up going right underneath your, your arm. And uh, sometimes it might rub or things like that. But I just like the fact that you have added security. So you have a zipper, it's Damia Ben. So it's very, very carefree. And you have a few pockets in there as well for some organization. It doesn't have the most organization, but it's, I still think it's really, really great. And I don't think it has too bad of a price point. Um, 
I probably think that the reason why I haven't added it is because it tends to slouch just a little bit more than I would like. But for the most part, I think that the Portobello is a beautiful, beautiful bag. Uh, okay. Just the Evan. Why don't you own any Hermes or YSL bags? Uh, do you have any Christian Louboutins? Just curious because you're, you are into luxury goods, but it seems like you only showcase your Louis Vuitton and Chanel pieces. Uh, I don't have any Hermes bags. Um, I've had this question asked quite a bit this week, which is really funny. Uh, will I ever add Hermes to my collection? At this point in time, no, I don't, I don't, I mean, I like them, but there's nothing really that I'm like, oh, I have to have it. You know what I mean? Uh, in the future, I would like to add one, but as of right now, nope, <laughs> I'm good with what I have. And the Yves Saint Laurent bags, even though I absolutely love them, I love the way that they look. I don't like all of the problems that I've been hearing as far as their quality issues. And, you know, some of these have some prettier price tags and they don't hold their resale value as much as I would like. Uh, so that's why I'm kind of hesitant on adding something like that to my collection, even though I, you have no idea <laughs> how bad I want to add a new St. Laurent bag to my collection. Uh, and, uh, do I have Christian Louboutins? I used to have, uh, two pairs. I actually ended up getting rid of them because they hurt my feet so incredibly bad. Uh, and yeah, <laughs> you know, I, I just, I really like Chanel and Louis Vuitton. That's just who I'm into right now at the moment, you know, in a, in a year's time, it might be different. All these bags might be gone and you might see, who knows, one <laughs> St. Laurent or one Hermes. You never know. <laughs> uh, okay. Hello, Kitty. 0518. I'm thinking about getting the Celine mini belt bag. What are your thoughts on that bag? I don't see too many videos on it. Uh, and if I'm not mistaken, it retails for $23.50 here in the States. And when I was at Celine, uh, I saw it, but I never took it off the shelf. It wasn't... I I don't know. It's not... It's pretty, but I, yeah, it doesn't, I'm not attracted to it. Like I said, I didn't pull it off the shelf. I didn't play with it or anything like that. Uh, I like the fact that it's very simple. I do like that. Um, but there's nothing really that, that wows me with the bag. I don't know. Is that weird? <laughs> you know, some of the Celine styles are so, so, uh, simple and classic that that's what I love about them. Uh, but for this one, even though it is simple and it is classic, there's just, yeah, there's something that I'm not, not drawn to. Um, so I, sorry, I wish I could be more help. <laughs> uh, Celeste Pina, uh, just wanted to know your thoughts on the Greenwich purse. Looking at it makes me want it just to buy it, but I want to make sure it's the right buy, especially because it's a little on the pricey side. It is a pretty bag and I like it better, not hooked in the middle. Kind of reminds me of a Celine. Uh, and for those of you from, uh, trying to, to figure out which one the Greenwich is, it's from Louis Vuitton and it retails for $25.70 here in the States. I love that bag love, love that bag. Uh, I don't like the fact that it comes with the crossbody strap. I know you guys are sick of me saying that, but I don't like that. I love the fact that it's a very soft damier Ben pattern. It's from Louis Vuitton. Um, and it seems like the hardware just, I mean, bounces off of the bag that you initially see it just beautiful. Uh, I also love the fact that it has the microfiber leather interior and, uh, I'm not, I think I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's Nomad leather that it has on, um, for the leather trimmings. And, uh, you know, so it's not the regular dark Demi Ben color that you would normally get. It's a lighter Demi Ben leather and it's color treated or it's treated as well so that you don't have to worry about it. Uh, you know, uh, getting changing over time or anything like that. But I just, I love the contrast that the lighter, uh, the lighter, lighter leather has on the Damia Ben. I love the interior. I think it's a beautiful bag. It's very structured. When you open it up, it just, I mean, you're able to see everything at a glance. And I think it's absolutely beautiful. Is it worth the $2,570 price tag? That I don't know because it is, I mean, it's pretty much canvas. Uh, and you guys know how I feel about, you know, spending anything over $2,000 for a canvas bag, even if it has the microfiber lining interior, but, uh, it is such a beautiful bag. <laughs> so, um, does the, is the price tag justifiable? No. Or is it justified? No, I honestly don't think so. Even though it is gorgeous, gorgeous, but 
it is quite pricey. For that price, I would rather put a little bit more and have it be an all leather on prompt bag or even a Chanel or something like that. But for the most part, I would stick to um, under two grand <laughs> for canvas. Personally, I would. Uh, okay, Yarden White. Uh, I really want to get a pair of Chanel sunglasses, but the price feels like a bit much for something that isn't a bag or an SLG. I think that Chanel sunglasses are beautiful and I really and I really do want to own a pair, but I'm not sure if I can justify getting it for that price tag. Are they really worth it? What is the resale value of Chanel sunglasses? Uh, okay, so once upon a time, I had like six or six or seven pairs of Chanel sunglasses. At one time, I think I had five. Uh, and no, they do not have good resale value at all. They are gorgeous. They are beautiful, especially the ones with the Strauss crystal or the ones that have the chain, um, you know, the chain effect on the outside. I think they are beautiful with the pearls. I mean, they make some fantastic sunglasses, but no, they do not hold their resale value. I have lost quite a bit of money uh, when I have sold my Chanel Sunnies <laughs> because, there's, I mean, you buy them for like $550 and you sell them for $200, $175. You know, it, it's a huge, huge price difference. Uh, so for that matter, I would suggest maybe going the pre-loved route. Just make sure that when you go to get a pair that's pre-loved, if you decide to get pre-loved, uh, make sure that the lenses aren't scratched. Anything else, I mean, it's, it's going to be normal wear and tear or something that you would already end up doing with the sunglasses, uh, you know, but as beautiful as they are, no, they are not, not worth it. Oh, it pains me to say this, but I'm going to be honest with you guys. Uh, I, like I said, I lost a ton of money, <laughs> a ton of money on them. And I would suggest going the pre-loved route for sunglasses, uh, especially because sometimes they have, uh, unless you get a classic black pair or a tortoise pair, uh, or something that doesn't have too much, um, you know, too many different embellishments going on. Sometimes you might get sick of those. You might love them at the moment, but then you'll get sick of them in a few months or maybe a year. So you don't want to invest that much money into a pair of sunnies. Uh, but if you do, I mean, kudos to you. I did it. And <laughs> now I only have one, one pair of Chanel sunnies. Yeah. One pair. <laughs> I'm saying that way. Uh, okay. Uh, Sarah Cooper. I see you store all your bags in their dust bags. I don't, but I'm wondering if I should. Can you help me as the internet has conflicting ideas on how to store bags to protect them? Uh, I actually made a video on uh, handbag storage. I will try, uh, hopefully I will remember to link it in the description box below. But I know I've, I've had quite a few people ask me, why don't I just leave them out? You know, especially when I'm doing my videos and things like that. I just... I am such a stickler. I want my bags to look as beautiful as possible for as long as possible, especially because I have, um, you know, I have, I have quite a bit of bags and I don't get to rotate them as often. You know, sometimes I'll rotate three or four a week, but still some of them end up sitting there for maybe a week, two, a month three months, you know, what have you. And, uh, I just want them to look as good as possible, especially because I have two pretty big mirror, uh, two pretty big, uh, windows in my, in this room and the sun will end up hitting them. And if I leave them out, I don't want, I do not want to have any problems with, um, you know, with the light, you know, light transfer or anything like that coming into the room. So I'm just, I'm just crazy <laughs> when it comes, really, that's what it comes down to. I am so, so careful on how I store everything because if I ever decide to sell any one of these items, I want the next person that gets the item to have a pretty much uh, excellent to, or pristine to excellent to great looking bag. You know what I mean? So that's just, that's just how I am. I would love to be able to walk into my room or showcase them with them completely open so you guys can see what they look like and you know all the colors and all their glory but no <laughs> my you know my craziness will will totally take over and say yeah you gotta cover them <laughs> isn't that isn't that sad no you know to each their own uh okay ode ode Duog. I'm so sorry. I noticed that you always wear nail, nail polish, nail polish, nail polish, really many nail polish. So I was wondering if your nails get stained yellow or do you ever rest your nails? Um, I think I have mannish hands <laughs> with, when I don't have polish on. So I always try to have nail polish. And I have noticed that when I used to wear, uh, 
other nail polishes, my nails would definitely yellow. And another thing is, is that ever since I got this gifted to me, which is the Zoya three in one, um, formula, the polish remover, nail cleaner, and nail prep, my nails do not yellow at all. Uh, if anything, I might have more of a pinkish hue, depending upon if I have pink or red nail polish, cause that's what I end up wearing the most. Uh, but I have not had any problems with yellowing whatsoever. I don't know if it's because of the brand of polishes that I'm using now, who knows, or if it's the fact that I use this, I don't use any top coat. I don't use base coat. Uh, I noticed that when I use both of those things that my nail, my nail polish would end up chipping a lot quicker. So I stopped doing that. I literally just have two coats of polish uh, on my nails and I've had no problem. So I don't know if it's this, I don't know if it's a combination of both, uh, but I, yeah, I don't like to rest them because I think, like, as I said before, I think I have like really long fingers and mannish hands. <laughs> I don't know. I am, I'm kind of, I'm not self-conscious about them, but <laughs> I just feel like I have spider monkey fingers. Like I'm just going to grab onto branches and just start climbing. I don't know. <laughs> But uh, I do definitely recommend this uh, ever since, like I said before, ever since I got this gifted, I have not looked back. This is wonderful product and you really don't need too much to be able to get rid of um, uh, polish, especially with these Christian Louboutin ones. They're, they're very, very, very pigmented and um, these take a little bit longer to be able to take off all the color. But for the most part, uh, I have not had any problems with yellowing ever since I switched to these. Uh, okay. Sarah Gr Greco. Greco. I'm currently stationed in Germany and on the Louis Vuitton website, they still have some multicolor pieces. I'm considering getting the Sarah wallet in multicolor. Do you know when exactly they plan on discontinuing, discontinuing them altogether? I'm nervous that by the time I have the money saved up by February, they won't be available anymore. Um, okay. So I just wanted to make sure and clarify this. I talked about it in a few other mixed Mondays. When I spoke to, uh, some of the some of the management staff at Louis Vuitton, they had told me that they are not 100% discontinuing the multicolor pieces from what I was told. I know, you know, we all hear different stories on blogs from our essays and things like that. This is what I was told, uh, that they are not 100% discontinuing them. They are just slowly, uh, providing less, especially in the U.S. Little by little, they're going to trickle, trickle down to nothing. When that is going to be exactly that they're going to 100% discontinue them, I have no idea. But I know that, um, that also that places that are in Europe, uh, anywhere overseas, they are still going to continue to carry the multicolor print because it is extremely popular and they don't have any problem and they don't have any problems, especially when people go to, uh, uh, to visit these countries. So, from what I was told, uh, you know, the U S is pretty much the only one that's going to get it discontinued. Maybe even Canada. I'm not too sure. Uh, and it's funny because when we, when we had it, I mean, some of us bought it, you know, some, of, some of us really liked it. And now that, now that it's not available in the U S we're going crazy over it. Right. So, uh, <laughs> that's, that's very good. Um, very good marketing skills. But, um, it just, it's funny because that's what I was told that they're not going to discontinue it. They're not going to discontinue it in, uh, in other countries, mostly just the U S. So who knows? I wish I could tell you with certainty. Uh, but I know that we will get rid of, it'll be gone with us before it's gone in, gone in Germany. And I've had a lot of you guys tell me that, um, the, the makeup pouches are still available in the UK, in Spain. Uh, I had someone else tell me that in Paris, they're still available, obviously, because, you know, all of, all of Europe and mostly all of the countries overseas, uh, for us, they, they all have them. So I'm so jealous of all you guys, all you guys, you guys all have multicolor pieces still available and the prices are so fantastic compared to here. <sighs> jealous. <laughs> uh, okay. And, uh, next question. Melissa Bailey, what small wallet would you recommend? I have an Alma BB and an Eva. Okay. So I did bring these out as well. I'm trying to push these over because I think they're going to fall. All right. So I have two recommendations from Louis Vuitton. You can either go with the Chanel, uh, you know, little O card case that, that I've showed you guys, or with Louis Vuitton, you can go for, ah, for either one of these. Uh, you can always go for the compact wallet as well. It's a little bit smaller. It does. It doesn't take up too much room, so you should be okay. And with the BB, it's incredible how much you can actually fit in there, but obviously you want to be able to, you know, to, 
to fit as much as you possibly can. And I would go for these two options. The Zippy coin purse, I love the Zippy coin purse. Uh, I don't like the fact that you have to fold your money three, four times to be able to get it in here. Uh, plus, there's really no separate part to be able to put coins in here if this is what you are going to do. It does have quite a bit of credit card slots, so that is a major plus. And you also have the zipper closure, which is great. And it does have a really great uh, price point. Uh, but personally for me, it would be all about the Emprunt Clay. They retail for $4.40 here in the States, if I'm not mistaken. And I like the fact that if you wanted to, you can add coin to the back. And on the inside, even though you don't have any slots for credit cards, uh, you can still put quite a few in here. And I think this is great. It doesn't take up too much space. It's maybe just a little bit taller than the Zippy Coin Purse, but it's still a lot thinner than this one is. So I would definitely go for this one. And plus you can utilize it for other things. You can use it as a clay. You can use it as a mini wallet. You can use it as whatever you want. So I honestly think that this is a better uh, value for it. Plus it's all leather and it's beautiful and it smells fantastic. <laughs> And uh, I still think they're great. And on this one, you only have to fold your money twice versus three to four times on this one. So personally, I would do either one of these. That way you can... Um you can maximize how much, how many items you're going to store or you're going to put in your Eva or in your uh, Alma BB. Uh, okay. Now the last question, even though I did not write it down, uh, I cannot remember for the life of me who asked me. So I apologize, but I had someone uh, send me a message on Facebook of uh, how I felt about some of the designer bags that are on Groupon. And for those of you that don't know, Groupon is kind of like a, um, it's kind of like an Amazon, if you will. Uh, they have a ton of different items that you can get on there. And I mean, I have noticed that they have had vintage Chanel. I'm talking like 20 year old vintage Chanel. Uh, they've had some Louis Vuitton on there uh, and they, you know, they offer it at a discounted price. But with the Chanel and the Louis Vuitton, they are not um, brand new items. So they are vintage items. So they are pre-loved. And like I said, they offer them at a discount. Now Groupon also offers, also offers Celine Prada. And I have seen the Chanel J12, uh, chronograph watch on there. Now, how do I feel about that? Well, I think that speaks volumes volumes about the, the brand. If you're telling me, and I can't remember how much it is. Um, I'm trying to remember for the life of me what it was. Uh, the Celine one that I saw was a Phantom and they had it on there for 2200 22 2300 And for those of you that don't know, the Celine Phantoms actually retail for $3,100 here in the States. Uh, and these bags, the Celine bags and the Prada bags are brand, brand spanking new. They offer returns, if I'm not mistaken. I looked, I tried to look at the, at the post on them and how do I feel about it? Like I said, I think it speaks volumes for the companies. I think it's crazy that, you know, you have something like a discounted place such as Groupon selling them for, for a thousand dollars less than the retail price. And yet they're still trying to say that it's an exclusive bag and it's this and it's that. Uh, and it really, you know, it really does also showcase their resale value because if you can get it on Groupon, if you can get it on Amazon, if you can get it things like that, it, it's not going, it's not going to hold its, its retail value as well. I think they've had Gucci on there as well. And you guys know how I feel about Gucci. Uh, and you know, like I said, they do have Louis Vuitton. They do have Chanel, but it's vintage Chanel, except for the J12 watch, which I saw, which I was shocked. Uh, and you know, it's just, again, it goes to show that we are paying so much money for some of these designer brands that are definitely not worth it. I hate to say it. I know I'm going to get a lot of evil eyes for it. I can feel them, but it's true. I mean, why would I want to go to the to a Prada store and spend three to $4,000 on a bag when I can go on Groupon and get it for $2,000 or $1,800. That just lets me know that it, it's not as exclusive as they're trying to make it out to be. You know what I mean? Uh, and even though they do have that watch on there for Chanel, they don't have any of the bags and they don't have Louis Vuitton. And as we all know, Neiman, Saks, uh, Bergdorf's, none of those Chanel and Louis Vuitton never go on sale as far as handbags go. They have sale on shoes, but they don't have shell. Uh, they don't have sales on the actual bags. So that kind of adds to the exclusivity of the brand and to the resale value of the brand, you know? So yeah, I was shocked. I remember, uh, I saw it a week prior and I was just 
floored. You know, my husband's like, why would you go to the store and pay $3,400 with tax or $3,500 when you can get it on here for way cheaper? I'm like, I know. <laughs> but anyways, that does it, you guys, for Minx Monday. And I knew I said I was going to do this on Tuesday, but Minx Monday just belongs on Monday, right? All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you all tomorrow with my luxury sale video. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day, you guys.